and welcome to the 14th episode of Renaissance Weekly, so glad you could join us. For those who don't know what the Renaissance Club is, it is a non-profit rehabilitation clubhouse for adults with mental illness. We are co-anchors on Michael like Closing, this is Michael Lorenzio. Hello Mike, what do we have on the show today? I'm glad you asked. Today on the show we have your interview with Renaissance Club member Bob Ethier and his video game, retro video game collection. But first we've got a weather point from our very own weatherman, Walter Veligor. Walter, let's go with the weather. Thanks Mike. Sorry I wasn't here last week. I was in the Bahamas. Boy, was the weather amazing. I heard you guys had a storm. Tuesday, mostly sunny, high of 42, low of 28. Wednesday, scattered a.m. showers, high of 44, low of 34. Thursday, mostly sunny, high 54, low of 32. Friday, partly cloudy, high of 47, low of 37. Now back to you, Mike. Thanks, Walter. Today is International Mother Language Day. Announced by UNESCO in 1999, International Mother Language Day celebrates cultural diversity and commemorates the language martyr students of 1952 Bangladesh. Hmm. These students are honored by the encouragement of multiculturalism and the promotion of protective measures uh, for endangered, endangered languages. It's hard to imagine the challenges faced by students who have been ordered to learn in a foreign language, as without linguistic inclusion there is no equal access to education. Current International Mother Language Day events include multicultural festivals, which promote the hearing of all voices, and display social cohesion, cultural awareness, and tolerance. Unique nuances and subtleties of linguistic communication which connects individuals to culture and personal identity are valued and encouraged. Hmm. In the words of Nelson Mandela, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. Sticky Bun Day. Whether you have a sweet tooth or prefer carbohydrate-filled treats, the Sticky Bun is ideal. Delight to fill the brief. Fortunately, for those who enjoy a good Sticky Bun, an entire day is dedicated to celebrate eating them. Sticky Bun Day. Today is National Sticky Bun Day. Go out and get one. Uh, the exact origin of Sticky Buns are debatable as of history of Sticky Bun Day with some attributes the sticky bun to the ancient Egyptians, other argue that it originated in Germany. However, one of the thing that is agreed on is that German settlers brought the sticky bun to Pennsylvania in the United States. These pastries were originally called Sch folks, this is not this is German, so yeah. Schecken. Is that what that says? Schnecken? Schnecken. Schnecking. Schnecken. And are especially of uh, Philadelphia. Of course, there is only one thing you could do to celebrate Sticky Bun Day and all its glory, and that is go out and eat a Sticky Bun. Mmm, Sticky Bun. Support your local bakery. So, this is also February 21st, and if you have a birthday today, you celebrate it with the likes of Kelsey Grammer, best known as Fraser Crane in Cheers and on Fraser, as well as Sideshow Bob on The Simpsons, turns 62 today. Sideshow Bob, that's great. He's a great character on that show. Chuck Paul Lennick, author known for writing Fight Club, turns 55. William Baldwin, best known as being the younger Baldwin brother of Alec Baldwin, because nobody knows Baldwin's besides Alec. <laughs> Mark and Scott Skelly, NASA astronauts who flew Space Shuttle Endeavor and spent time in the International Space Station, turns 53. Jenna Love Hewitt, best known for her um, characters in Party of Five and The Ghost Swifter turns 38. Jordan Peele, best known as Key, uh, from Key and Peele and the movie Kinu, which is about a cat. Kinu? Kinu. Oh, Keanu. 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 Same, it sounds like, looks like Kinu, but it's Keanu. I watched this movie. It was hilarious. Go watch it. Uh, Ellen Page, star of the movie Juno, also played Kitty Pratt in the, um, Pride. Is it Pratt? Pride. Pride. Kitty Pride in the X-Men movies turns 30. Wow, she's 30 now. Mm -hmm. Corbin Boo, Blue, who played Chad Dandoff in the High School Musical movies. Chad, Chad Danforth. Chad Danforth. Yeah, whatever. That's, the movie was stupid. Uh, yeah, some people like him. Turns tw 28. You can quote me on that, folks. Uh, turns 28 today. <laughs> Sophie Turner, uh, English actress, turns 21. Blanket Jackson, or better known as Prince Michael Jackson II, turns 15. Sam Peckinpah, best known as the director of Wild Bunch, who died in 1984, would have been 92. And finally, folks, we should all raise our wands today for Alan Rickman, who was best known as Professor Snape in the Harry Potter movies, and also Han Grober in Die Hard, and a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of other stuff that he is most famously known for. Uh, died in 2016, would have been 70 today, folks. So, 
Speaking about today, that leads us into our next topic on this date in history with Michael Closing. Mike? Thanks, Mike. Today in history, in 1782, the U.S. Congress resolves establishment of a U.S. Mint. In 1792, U.S. Congress passed the Presidential Succession Act. In, 19, in 1842, John Greenaw is granted the first U.S. patent for the sewing machine. In 1848, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels published the Communist Manifesto. In 1878, the first telephone directory is issued in New Haven, Connecticut. Hmm. In 1885, the newly completed Washington Monument is dedicated. In 1887, Oregon becomes the first U.S. state to make Labor Day a holiday. Uh, in 1925, the New Yorker publishes its first issue. Hmm. In 1947, in New York, uh, Edwin Land demonstrates the first instant camera the Polaroid Land Camera, to a meeting of the Optical Society of America. In 1948, NASCAR is incorporated. In 1952, the British government, under Winston Churchill, abolishes identity cards in the UK to set the people free. Hmm. 1953, Francis Crick and James Watson discover the structure of the DNA molecule. In 1965, Malcolm X is assassinated at the Audubon Ballroom in New York City. 1986, AIDS patient Ryan White returns to classes at Western Middle School. 1997, Empire Strikes Back Special Edition premieres. And in 2014, U.S. President Barack Obama meets with the Dalai Lama. Back in 2014, he was president. Not anymore, folks. <laughs> well, I was not aware of those days in history, Mike. Thanks. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You know, Mike, here at the Renaissance Club, we do a lot of work, but we also like to combine work with pleasure, which is where our social events come into play. Last week, we had our Valentine's Day dance. Yes, I know Valentine's Day was last week. We played Clue, and we had a trip to the Boston Museum of Science. Oh, I think we have a review of that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll take a look at that. So, our trip to the, re the Boston Museum of Science was quite interesting, wouldn't you say, Mike? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, this is probably my third time there, actually, in the past couple of years. Uh, changes up every, um, every year, except for the main exhibits, but, you know, the, the new thing this year was uh, Chocolate and Da Vinci. Mm, yes, uh... Very interesting. Uh, the Da Vinci exhibit, I, I thought, was uh, the most interesting of the two. Um, they had a special section uh, dedicated to the Mona Lisa. They were like examining like individual parts of it, uh, like what her eyes, her hand, and you know uh, what it looks like under different lighting situations. It was like really amazing how much detail they went into just the one painting. Uh, the other p places they had uh, his sketches. Uh, his uh, inventions, uh, it was like amazing how many inventions he, he, this guy had to come up with. And when you think of him, you usually think, oh, he's the painter, yeah. you know, and all this. And, but he also made a lot of inventions. Uh, sure not did. a lot of which ended up panning out, but they probably inspired other things down the line from future people, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, did I, you see the tank? I did not see the tank. I, 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 was it, it's, was I was it like briefly umbrella shaped? I, like a... Uh, Made of wood. Yeah, really I, think I, like I think I missed like a missed that. I know I, I I went through the exhibit, um, and, and I kind of I think I went too quickly through yeah. the exhibit. I did see the painting. I did see a few things. I was like, oh yeah, I know he did that. Um, but you know, and then in the beginning of it, I saw some of the inventions, which I was like, wow, I didn't know he tried to do that. But yeah, other than that, I just, it was like literally, I was in there for like. You know, five minutes. There was so much yeah, to do there. Likewise. It's like you had to, you, like, you, you, we were on a time basis, so. Yeah. And the uh, the chocolate, uh, the exhibition, uh, not exactly what we thought it was going to be, right? Yeah, uh, I thought that was horrible. I mean, I got, I understood what it was, I mean, but. The first half is basically just the history of, of how chocolate was discovered. Yeah. And it was really more of a technical um, level, it wasn't very interesting. The second half, they actually like had uh, on display old uh, old tins and candy yeah. bar wrappers and stuff. So you really got to see like the history of what it used to look like, and that was like the most interesting part of it. I thought. Yeah, it was interesting to see that they used uh, chocolate as money. Yeah. They, they, wow. they, they used um, chocolate as money, but way back in the uh, ancient days there, times. ancient times. But other than that, it was in the great exhibit. Um, one of my favorite things I, I think I saw was, I mean, I've always been keen on dinosaurs, so the little dinosaur activity, which has been mm -hmm. there since, you know, God knows how long, I think I, since I was a kid, <laughs> so probably even longer, 
And uh, I really enjoyed the live animal care yes. center. That I mean, there was only a few animals, but I, I found out during a live presentation, which I think you yeah, missed, I didn't get to see that. Uh, that they actually have 150 animals at this place, and they're a accredited zoo. Um, so that was fantastic to learn. Um, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, I did not know that until the other day when I saw it, when I saw it. So we got to see. Um, you know, they they brought out a um, an alligator. Um, a groundhog, what they called it a woodchuck, but it's a groundhog. <laughs> um, and they brought out um, a frog. No, excuse me, not a frog. A toad, toad uh, African toad. I guess it which it would also hibernates. Well, they how, called it something how, else. How big was it? Yeah, it was like you know, pretty decent size. Yeah. I guess it like would eat. It, it eats whatever. It does not. It's not picky. <laughs> so she was saying that uh, it would eat the frog next to you. Nice. So it'd be like, you know, if it got hungry enough, it would just turn around and go. <laughs> and you know, eat you, like, and you'd, you'd be in his mouth. So I thought that was really fascinating that that would, you know, it would do that. Uh, we also uh, saw an Omni uh, theater presentation. Uh, we ended up, the two of us ended up seeing the Extreme Weather um, movie. I believe uh, you didn't uh, like it too much. No, no, I thought I, it was interesting. I was as I was watching the previews for the other things that they had in there. I was like, oh, I wish I had gone to that instead. Mm. Patrick Stewart does Journey to Space. Come on, people. Yeah, they didn't that, that, really that, that, advertise that before we came, did yeah. they? But, um, you know, it was, we had a, it was three options that we could have chose for the times that we were there. We, uh, it was the extreme weather, Journey to Space, or National Parks. Nobody ended up wanting to watch National Parks. But five of us went to see extreme weather, and five of us went to see Journey to Space. Uh, I did talk to the members that seen Journey to Space. Uh, they all seemed to uh, like like Journey to Space. Uh, I know I didn't care for the extreme weather. I don't know if you did or not. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was all right. Uh, you could have used a little more diversity. Extreme. Uh, yeah, that too. Uh, the ma major talks uh, talking points were um, the melting glaciers in yeah. Alaska, um, wildfires, and uh, tornadoes. Yeah. So. They kind of cut between the three of them as they uh, were talking about stuff. So, uh, other than that, the, you know, the usual exhibits that were there um, were always fantastic to see. I, I tried sneaking up on a bird, and that failed miserably. Yeah, then, I actually uh, tried. They had a, a different exhibit in the behind-the-scenes uh, uh, exhibit uh, where it was a little more advanced, and I actually managed to sneak up on a bird. And yeah, they had a thing where you could try to sneak up on a, or an easy bird or a hard bird, and yeah, I failed on both times, so apparently I'm not a good bird uh, bird uh, sneaker upper. <laughs> on. Um, is there anything else before we end our uh, segment that we can think of that we would probably want to bring to attention to the viewers here um, as we look through? Well, uh, let's see. The Colby Trophy Room was pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we couldn't go in there, but that was pretty interesting. Yeah, you got uh, to look inside uh, uh, all the different uh, animal uh, and, um, animals on display there. Oh, one other thing that I know, uh, I know is that every animal that they actually have there Ooh, yes, is an uh, actual animal. It's yes, an animal. Uh, all they, taxidermy. Uh, they, they, they taxidermy, so like the, the polar bears and the... You know, the tigers, and uh, yeah, there was a polar bear, I don't know if you saw it, the tigers. And then, like I said, there was a couple of live animals, like we saw, I saw a black widow spider, which, you know, I was stayed far, far <laughs> away from, because, you know, you know, Spider-Man and all that, you know, it could escape and bite you, and you know, just kidding. So you don't want superpowers? No, I don't want superpowers. I don't want to be nowhere near a spider. Uh, one other thing to note, uh, Kathy Closey got to see the butterfly garden, which uh, sadly was an extra fee. It cost $6 to go into the butterfly garden. Yeah, there was a few uh, things that cost a little extra. Uh, she, but she had a lot of fun. She said that uh, anybody wearing the color red, all the butterflies flock to. Apparently, <laughs> uh, the butterflies are attracted to that color. So, unlike bulls, who are not uh, swayed by a particular color, just movement of a cape, Butterflies are attracted to the color red. Yes, yeah, yeah, and I wish I had money to get that. So uh, that's all the time we have for this review. Uh, we thank everybody for um, watching us. We encourage you to go to Museum of Science. Oh, one thing I did find out is that if you have an EBT card in Massachusetts, you can go to this Museum of Science for free. So, um, you know, if you guys have EBT, uh, food stamps or benefits, and you want to attend the Museum of Science in Boston, as long as it's from Massachusetts and Boston, you can go to the Museum of Science and wow. get in. Yeah, I run that out. So, and back if, to you. And if you're not in the New England area, go support your local museum. Yeah. The back to the studio. So it's now time for my interview with Bob Ethier, Ren Club legend.
Last week, Bob and Mike talked about the Nintendo Classic that just came out. Um, a small little entertainment system that has a couple games on it. Um, it was a great, um, great uh, review of the game. Um, this week, we have uh, some other game systems here that belong to Bob Ethier, and we're going to discuss each one of them. So Bob, why don't we start with uh, why don't we start with this one right here? What is that? This is the Intellivision Flashback. You know, this is you know. Remember George Plimpton usually do these commercials for Intellivision. You know, I'll tell you more about some. You know, with because these are mostly the games. Hmm. Can um, you look at this. Yeah. Some of the games and and television flashback classic game console. Interesting. You got a lot of games of like if I don't the, the camera can pick that up there. Nice. And it looks like it's got a uh, let's see. Like 30, 40 games on it, Bob? 60. 60, wow. I'm, my math is way off when I'm counting my quick hair. That's fantastic. And, uh, how much did that cost, you know? I got it on Amazon, got this at Amazon, and it cost me about um, 40 bucks. 40 bucks comes with 60 game, and it's an intent. And do you like the system? Oh, yes. It's really good. And I have these inserts at home that um, is that goes with this. You know, where you play the games and yeah. all that. Fantastic. And then we got uh, another old system here. What's this one? This is the ColecoVision Flashback. ColecoVision. Oh, I remember them. You know, this is... All the games are built in for the ColecoVision Flashback. ColecoVision. And, you know, the company Coleco revolutionized electronic games. Yes. Before, you know, other toys as well, but they revolutionized electronic games way before Atari. Yeah, and you would say this is, it also comes with 60 games. Yep. And uh, where did you get this? You got this on Amazon too? Or? Yeah, I got it on Amazon for about, um, i say about 50 bucks. 50 bucks. And it brings you back to the days of when you used to have like crappy systems. Now you get the PlayStation 4s and stuff out there. Uh, and uh, do you like this one too? Oh yes. Um, I like to play some of the uh, gambling games on it, like <laughs> like the poker and the roulette and all that stuff. That's pretty cool. But I'm going to learn how to play all the games. Yeah. So you're like an old-fashioned, you're like the old-fashioned games. You don't like the newer ones, huh? No, because you know how old I am. Yeah, we're, uh, we're all old out there. So this looks like it's an Atari flashback right here. Atari 7. Atari 7. Which looks like it also has 60 games, right? No, it has 101. 101, wow. That's a lot of 101 Atari games. Let's see. A couple of them are Asteroids. Oh, wow. What else is on here that I might know? Let's see. Hmm. What's that game with the... Um, Demons and Diamonds. Demons and, and Diamonds, oh, yeah. What about that Caterpillar game? Do you remember that Caterpillar? Centipede. Centipede, is that on here? Yep. Is it? Oh, I remember that game. Centipede. Centipede, that's great. They also have pinball and pinball and, stuff. Pinball and um, miniature golf. And then this is just like a regular Atari where you're like... <laughs> the joysticks, yep. This is great. This is fantastic. And what did that run you? <clears throat> that cost me about um, 50 bucks. 50 bucks and we would get that online too or... No, I got this at GameStop. GameStop. GameStop sells that. Interesting, really. That's fantastic to know. Yeah. So if you're interested in buying one at GameStop, they may still have them there. You can go check it out. Yeah. And they're then, they're very limited with um, what retro games at GameStop in my, where I get them in, um, North, in Chelmsford. Yeah. But there's multiple GameStops in, all around the country, so I'm sure somebody could find one. Yeah. Then we got the Sega Genesis, which is 80, says right on the thing, 80... Built-in games, a nice Sega Genesis system, small version, and um, it has the the thing just in case anybody has an old Genesis game. So no, these are on. We didn't think these were on, but they're on. No, they, they they only work when you move the joysticks, but hmm. there's no on and off. So you can actually put old games that are not on here or in here. Yeah, that's fantastic. And some of the games that they have here, 
Uh, let's see. Oh, they got the Mortal Kombat series. Oh yeah, Mortal Kombat one, two, and three. Oh, I remember those days. I used to love them games. We have the whole Sonic series. All the Sonic. Yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog. That was fantastic too. Back way back then. Where did you way back? Um, what uh, what'd you pay for this one? I paid fifty dollars on that one too. Oh, fifty dollars, and again, you must enjoy playing. You play these all constantly. Yeah. And then I, I play whenever I can because. I have a busy lifestyle and everything, but they're good collectible value. Yeah. The reason I don't have the ADC adapters, because that would break, because they're at home, my AC adapters at home. So when I go back to my TV in my living room, I can just plug them all in and stack them up. Nice, nice. And then I know, and I already spoke to Mike, Mike about the, the Nintendo Classic, but I didn't get a chance to look at it, so I'm going to take a real quick look here. And this looks like it has a uh, thirty built-in games. Thirty built-in games, and I, I I watched the video of you and Mike last week, and it was fantastic. I just wanted to get the game just because of Mario Three, um, but it looks like it got Mega Man Two, Castlevania, wow, a lot of classic games in this thing. And uh, would you get this? I got that at GameStop.com. GameStop.com, and you because I, I got I gotta be brutally honest. I got the um, Nintendo before. Michael got got the Nintendo. Yeah. I stayed up till one in the morning when they started selling uh, on November eleventh when they start, released the uh, Nintendo. I stayed up early in the morning to get it. To get it, and yeah. luckily enough, I was one of the lucky ones. So I know they sold out really quickly. Uh, I know that I did do that. My I was uh, I heard about that, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get one of these too. Uh, so this is a fantastic collection. I know you have some more collections, and then we're going to be doing more videos with more collections later on. But it was fantastic to have your review and to let people know that you can still get these games. Or you can get them online, you can get them at GameStop. And, and there's, for these four, you can get them at, at www.atgames.com or .org. Yes. So if anybody wants to you know, take a look and see if they're interested in buying some of these old-fashioned games and live your childhood, go pick them up. You know, these are fantastic old games that people enjoy. Well, thank you again, Bob, for being a part of this, and I will send it back to the studio. Thank you very much. So, Mike, how does a rancher keep track of his cattle? I don't know, Mike. How does a rancher keep track of his cattle? With a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Michael Closey. And I'm Michael Dunzio. Thanks for joining us here once again at Renaissance Weekly. Remember, folks, life, life always offers off you a second chance. It's called tomorrow. This review was brought to you by Sharpie High Gel. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> well, last week, Bob talked about the NS. I did it again. Uh, it was me. I talk. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was, that's bad because I, need, I, I had to cough for like five seconds there and I was like, I can't. Look at it. Whoa. I used the. Yes! <laughs> oh my goodness. Who let the gremlins in here? I used the force to keep it up until the video was up. You picked this one to read. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this all out, folks. The ideal delight. I'm going to just skip gestro. I'm going to channel Ender. Endeavor. 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 Okay. Because I didn't get it in the beginning, this episode was brought to you by Carola. Carola? Right, Carola? Crayola? Crayola! But you're holding upside down. Crayola. <laughs> <laughs> Which we cannot. <laughs>